Hey there, Aquarius. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to the month of September of 2022. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So please keep in mind, Aquarius, that this is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. In this session, we are going to be looking at the energies of the month of September for you from the, uh, from the point of view of true sidereal astrology. Now, if you are not familiar with true sidereal astrology and you would like to learn or just experience more, you found yourself in the right place. Please make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to get all of the notifications for all of the sessions that we do here on the channel. If you are new, also subscribe, but also smash that like button for me and leave me a comment in the comment section down below letting me know how this resonates for you. Uh, if you've never seen your true sidereal natal chart, I highly encourage you to shoot me an email um, letting me know that you are interested in, in seeing your chart. Send me your birth info, the date, the time, and the place of birth for you. <clears throat> and I will be more than happy to shoot you back your uh, natal chart from the True Sidereal System free of charge. I am available for natal chart interpretation such sessions or just a general tarot uh, and oracle card energy reading. The readings and the sessions that I offer in, are in the description box below. So just read through that and let me know whichever one you would like and I will be more than happy to get you all hooked up. Now, as we are talking about the energies from this system, I am gonna be talking about the placement of the planets in the houses. With that said, this is going to resonate most, or at least it's going to be the most accurate for Aquarius rising. But if you are an Aquarius sun or moon, this could still resonate for you. It's just that the placement of the planets in the houses is not going to be accurate because we're looking at this from the point of view of Aquarius rising, yeah? But anyway, definitely let me know how this resonates for you. And um, I think that's it. Let's just get into this for you, Aquarius. So for you this month, um, I was sitting here and reading through the energies and just kind of channeling and looking at the chart for you and nothing really came through until these certain tarot cards came up. Um, and the cards that came up here, just so you, so you can see, you have judgment with the seven of wands, the six of swords and the king of cups. Now, what this kind of said to me was, there is some sort of judgment call that is being made. For the bulk of you though, I feel like this judgment call has is already an understanding that you have in your life. But at this point, this month, the energies are influencing you to finally put that into place or put that into action or take action in terms of some sort of judgment call that is being made. And this definitely has to do with interpersonal relationships. Now, what these cards are saying are, or is the seven, the judgment with the seven of wands, six of swords and king of cups, you're needing to have the emotional stability and emotional maturity to put certain boundaries in place for you in terms of the connections with the people around you. And either this is going to be for the sake of moving the relationship or relationships forward um, maybe progressing in your life towards better relationships with people or to move forward away from a certain association or relationship all together, okay? Now, this kind of makes sense because this month we do have a full moon in your home sign of Aquarius. And for the collective, the message with that has been bringing forward new senses or new modes of expression that were influenced by the new moon in Leo back on October 20, I'm sorry, back in August, on August 27th. Um, by the time we reach the full moon, it's all about bringing that mode of expression out to the collective, communicating with that, communicating uh, with people through that and also even potentially making new connections with people to help facilitate this new mode of expression uh for you aquarius rising this is happening in your first house okay your house of the sense of self uh your identity and your um I am hearing your sense of well-being, but really that is more connected to the fact that uh, Venus for for Aquarius rising, I believe, is moving, transiting through your eighth house. But then also Taurus, uh, <coughs> Mars is moving through Taurus here. And for you, Aquarius, I believe that's in your third house. But let's look at the chart. Instead of me guessing, let's just look at the chart and we'll see. <clears throat> so here we go. Aquarius rising specifically, all this, although this could resonate for you as an Aquarius sun or moon or any other placement. Um, yep, 
Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I misspoke. Mars is moving through Taurus. Yes, but it's in your first house. I'm sorry, your fourth house, your house of nurturance. Um, and, and yeah, your house of nurturance really, and your home and family life. Okay. I feel like Mars transiting through your fourth house here, um, is really giving, is really pushing you, is really influencing you to create some sort of new foundation, a better structure to, so that you can feel better nurtured for some some of you here, the relationships that are in question that are coming up in question could be relationships that you developed in your childhood or early in life or connections with people that make you feel like home. But there's really something about balancing this out because Venus here is transiting in Leo still, but through your sixth house of health and well-being root and routines. Okay. Uh, um, there really is Venus. I feel like is really influencing you Aquarius to regenerate uh, or, or or better love yourself or um, develop new ways to better love yourself. Mars transiting through Taurus gives us that sense of tenacity and follow through to really make the the physical changes, okay? And to follow through with the efforts that's needed to make those physical changes. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about here that's getting this, giving me this energy is one of your ruling planets of Saturn. Now, your your ruling planets would be Saturn and Uranus, but in this day and age, Uranus is more of your, is more associated with your ruling planet. Let's start with Saturn. Saturn is in the 12th house for you, again, for Aquarius rising. Now, Saturn in the 12th house is not necessarily so good or doesn't necessarily feel so good. Saturn is all about structure and organization. Uh, and the 12th house is ruled by Pisces and Pisces is not even about that structure or organization here. Also, the 12th house is, is all about the collective, the greater collective. But with Saturn in your 12th house right now, it's going to be in your 12th house for some time because Saturn does move fairly slow in our sky. But with Saturn in your 12th house for this month, the focus is on creating or rebuilding or restructuring that structure when it comes to the greater collective. Okay. And with Saturn being retrograde, that's helping you to break down the old structures and helping you to get a sense of creating the new ones. All right. Now your other ruling planet of Uranus is moving through Aries and that for you, Aquarius is it Aquarius rising is in your third house of communication. All right. Right, so I really feel like the transit of, of Uranus moving through Aries for you, Aquarius rising, has really been influencing you with this third house energy. Has really been influencing you to find new ways of communicating. Is helping you to transform your sense of self in order to communicate in new and better ways. Now with this full moon here, actually let me animate this so that we can get forward to the full moon so I can show you. The full moon is on the late hours of September 9th into the early hours of September 10th. And as you can see, Aquarius rising, it is in your first house. Whereas the sun, which the moon is opposing, creating that full moon energy, the sun is in your seventh house, uh, ruled by Libra, the seventh house being your interpersonal relationship relationships, balance and harmony within those relationships, maybe even legal matters. Okay. But the full moon, the moon is in your first house. So I really feel like this is really influencing you to, and giving you that power to express yourself in new ways to really bring greater balance and harmony in your life when it comes to interpersonal relationships. Now, the thing about that is Aquarius, some of you are doing this and that is in terms of progressing this specific relationship forward and bringing it into a new and brighter and more beneficial and harmonious situation for all involved. But also for some of you, you could be completely leaving that relationship behind. But if you are leaving these relationships behind, if you are using this King of Cups energy of being really, truly emotionally uh, mature, aware, and available to move you forward, if you are leaving certain relationships behind, it's absolutely for your best and highest good, okay? You're needing to have better boundaries here. So if you do have to leave a, a relationship behind, understand that it's really for your highest good, okay? Now, here's the other thing. You have this King of Cups energy. This is rule, this is, this represents Scorpio energy. 
Scorpio is the ruler of the eighth house. And for you, uh, Aquarius rising, Mercury is retrograding. That's another thing to talk about this month. Mercury is retrograding through the sign of Virgo, but is for you, Aquarius rising, retrograding from your eighth house to your seventh house. Mercury retrograde is a really great time to learn new things and uh, rewrite that programming. Mercury being in its main exalted sign of Virgo is really helping you to restructure that sense of health and wellness, that sense of well-being, those routines and the structure surrounding those routines. With Mercury retrograding from your eighth house into your seventh house, there is a level of uncovering things, Scorpio energy, okay? Having the strength and the tenacity and the emotional uh, fortitude to restructure things, to understand what is needing to be uncovered or what is being uncovered for you as Mercury is moving from there into your seventh house in terms of these relationships that may not be of benefit for you at all, or at least the structure of those relationships is not of benefit for you. Now, Scorpio is ruled by Mars, and Mars is giving you that energy in Taurus in your fourth house, is giving you that tenacity, that strength of will, and the consistency and the follow-through. The Hierophant, which is that the overall energy at the bottom of the deck for you for this situation, representing Taurus, it's giving you that strength of follow through to really restructure these situations so that you can love and nurture yourself in better ways. But also this may be a really tough lesson to learn, the Hierophant energies. And that's why you're really encouraged to develop that sense of emotional strength to follow through with whatever this is for you, okay? Let's see if we can get anything else for you. I really kind of touched on most of the situation. Now, actually, hold on. Uh, last thing that I want to say, is I want to talk about the new moon energy here. The new moon in, a, in this month is going to be in the sign of the constellation of Virgo. Now, that is, again, more Virgo energy, okay? Um, and it's straddling your eighth, seventh and eighth house. Of course, this is Aquarius rising. It's straddling that eight, seventh and eighth house for you. So um, also, there is a stellium of energy between the sun, the moon, Mercury, and Venus, all in Virgo at this time. And with Venus being here, um, I feel like Venus is providing the collective with a level of fertilizer to really help us break new ground. A new moon is a great time to reset the situation. And with everything that you may have been able to learn, or at least everything that you have the opportunity to learn, with Mercury retrograding and with Venus progressing from your sixth house, promoting ways of you loving and nurturing yourself in much better ways, into now Venus will be in your seventh house here, still in, uh, no, all in in Virgo, okay, this is providing you with that fertilizer to really enrich the ground and release yourself from the devilish or toxic um, and maybe even codependent attachments that you have, that you've got going on here, all right? This is a really beautiful energy for you, Aquarius. It's it may not be easy, but anything that is not easy, always remember, anything that is not easy is absolutely worth doing, okay? And I definitely feel like that's what Mars and Taurus transiting through your fourth house is telling you. If you can find new and better ways to love and nurture yourself, there you go. Eight of Pentacles, the consistency to get the job done. It may be easy. It may not be easy. It's going to take some, uh, uh, it's going to take effort going to take effort, but Mars in Taurus is giving you that energy to make the effort, to be consistent, to follow through with this energy, okay, or with this transformation for you. Ultimately, Aquarius, I really feel like this is a really beautiful energy. I do want to, uh, want to, uh, uh, spirit is wanting me to um, influence you, to really encourage you to celebrate during this new, uh, this full moon because of that full moon in your sign of Aquarius, okay? This is all meant to benefit everyone and to bring harmony and greater union and balance to the collective, yeah? Yeah. Okay, that's pretty much what I have for you right now, Aquarius. Let me see if I can get you a closing message. Cl Whoop! Hold on, wait. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. You have the four of cups, which I do feel like is an energy that you may have been. It's like an energy of dragging your feet. I really feel like you may have been dragging your feet in terms of these connections that you may have with people around you. And the reason why you may have been dragging your feet here, Aquarius, is because, well, the, the narrative that I'm picking up on is, well, it's better for everyone if I just stay here. Mm. But is it really? Because think about it this way, Aquarius. If, even if you are having to really completely walk away from certain connections, it is actually going to benefit them in the long run because it does feel like you continuing to associate with these connections in these ways has not been benefiting them because you've just been enabling them in this sense, right? So that's where this apathy may be coming in, this dragging of your feet here. But uh, uh, but see, and there you go. You have that with the Eight of Swords, okay? So you feel trapped. You felt like you've, you've been stuck. You haven't wanted to hurt, you haven't wanted to hurt people. You haven't wanted to create or cause misery, but ultimately you are not really helping anybody by enabling them in, in some sort of toxic situation. You are better off releasing yourself from that and no longer playing that role. Of course, they could always find someone else to play that role for them, but that's their choice. You will benefit from this if you allow yourself to go with the inspiration, the Ace of Wands, how it is you're being inspired to take up a new stance in the situation to ultimately bring it to an end. Now understand, Aquarius, even if and or when you do finally remove yourself from this situation, first of all, I don't want to encourage you to do that just so that for the sake of them, well, it's going to help them grow so i'm gonna do that for them really think about this for yourself okay how are you negatively being affected here you have to be taken into account as well all right so even if they do end up meeting up with someone else that helps to enable them that's on them but you will still be free of the situation you will have still released yourself from this situation okay and ultimately that's only going to benefit you the, uh, the overall energy for you here is the moon to the ace of swords, to the hermit, yep, to the queen of swords, to the hanged man, to the five of swords, the, to the four of pentacles. Oh my goodness, Aquarius, this is all talking about you having held on to this situation, which ultimately is a lose-lose situation. It's a detriment to them because they're just being held in the same space. They're being enabled. And it's a detriment to you because you're losing out. You're being drained. You're being hurt by this. It's all about gaining that chance in perspective and you saying to yourself enough is enough be real with yourself about the illusions be real with yourself about how you may have been lying to yourself maybe even enabling your own sense of codependency and attachment hmm. but also keep in mind and this i've been saying this to everybody here especially this mars in energy is saying this even though it's taking some hard work or some concerted effort, it's worth it in the end. It's worth it in the long run. Even if you're the only one that benefits from it, oh well, now you're free to associate yourself with better individuals or better connections to help you move forward in your life. Yes? All right, Aquarius, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really, truly hope this was helpful for you. If you would like a copy of your true sidereal natal chart, please hit me up. I would love to provide that to you free of charge. I'm also available for chart interpretation sessions, as well as general energy readings and general love readings using the tarot and oracle cards. Those, uh, those sessions and those readings are all listed in the description box along with my email. If you're interested in any of that, please Please don't hesitate to shoot me an email letting me know you're interested and I will be more than happy to get you all hooked up and as always please make sure to smash that like button for me leave me a comment in the comment section down below and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future sessions I'm sending you all so much love I hope you have a fantastic month happy full moon to you and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very very soon yes excellent bye